Okay, before I got too far with the frame, I thought I would study it a little bit more before I committed to all of the pieces. So, like I did on the overall project, I put down some objectives or considerations. Obviously, I need the, the frame to do a good job of sealing, keeping moisture out of the inside of the array area. Uh, I also need there to be good structural support for both the glass and the backing. And uh, the strategy is on this particular design, rather than going with the tempered glass, to go with uh, some regular home center glass, replacement glass, that's basically window glass, that's uh, clear glass, <coughs> and have it sandwiched with the array and a stiffer backing material than you normally see on a uh, regular solar panel. So the backing material in my case is the same thickness as the glass, which is 3 30 seconds, and it would uh, allow the sandwich of the glass, the cells, and the backing to be stiff enough that it would structurally be as strong as tempered glass and hopefully resist breaking when uh, in any kind of hail situation. So that's kind of the strategy. The uh, next uh, consideration is the strength of the frame for mounting, either so it can freestand on its own or can be mounted to a racking system or to a standalone rack. Ease of assembly and uh, cost. So let's look at some different design approaches. Now my first thought when I was going after this low cost was to buy some what's called quarter inch channel stock aluminum channel stock which the quarter inch is really the dimensions of inside the channel and it's designed to basically be used with a quarter inch plywood and but my thought was okay I'll buy the channel and I'd put one layer of glass in there at 330 seconds so these numbers are in, three th are in 30 seconds and then uh, a layer of 330 seconds either plexiglass PVC or fiberglass re forced plastic backing and then uh, have the about a sixteenth of an inch for the uh, array itself inside and I believe that's going to be good enough and then I would take another channel piece and uh, basically either weld it or uh, epoxy it to the other channel. Now they do make uh, epoxy specifically for aluminum to aluminum and uh, that does that stuff works pretty good so that would be the plan for this design the next uh, approach would be very would be kind of similar but instead I'd use a three quarter inch piece of uh, channel to encompass the upper quarter inch channel and uh, that would give obviously a, a pretty stiff upper uh, area for holding the array structure together and it would give me another another dimension here to be able to put another bead of epoxy or excuse me of uh, silicone to seal up the glass to channel interface here so that's kind of one advantage of this approach and one of the next approaches is <clears throat> a similar thing but instead of the quarter inch channel I'd use the 3 8 inch channel material that's designed to hold 3 8 inch uh, thick uh, plywood and instead I'd put the glass, the backing, and then I have a much bigger area or volume here to work with for putting the, the cells in there. Now that's that's actually more area than a person needs but if you, if you believe you need to have a little bit of air circulation uh, this might be your preferred approach. And again I'd use a either welding or uh, structural epoxy to hold the two channel pieces together. The next approach is, is kind of similar but I, instead of putting the quarter inch channel above I would have it below as a structural piece for in improving the mounting strength below and it would provide a stronger structural support for holding the array itself up 
so this provides a little bit better support for gravity for the, the weight of the, uh, the backing material and the, uh, the cells. So that's one, one scheme. And then the next one is similar, but it's using the 3 8 inch channel below to provide the backing for the backing material, the structural support for that, and much stronger structural integrity for the mounting uh, section itself. So that's that approach. So if I take a look at those five options and go through and give them a score from one to three with three being the best for each of these criteria, ceiling, strength in the cell area, strength for mounting, ease of assembly, and cost. Uh, the, the primary advantage of this top one was that the, the cost would be good because it, the quarter inch ma channel material is the least expensive of the channel material that you can buy. But it doesn't really do so good for strength, either uh, for the cell area or for mounting. It's a little bit uh, less easy to use for assembly because I'd have to put sandwich everything into the top channel and then I'd have to uh, make the lower channel mount match exactly with the upper channel as far as uh, all the dimensions of the aluminum. <coughs> the, uh, the second approach uh, had the advantage of giving me a, a thicker interface between the channels and the glass to allow the seal to be superior on the top. For that one, and everything else was fairly neutral on that, no, no other redeeming attributes. The third option uh, didn't even give me as good of a seal as the first one, and but it did use a a quarter inch material so the cost was a little bit uh, excuse me the, it had it uses three quarter and three eighths material so it's it expense the cost goes up a little bit over the option two and then um, the fourth option uh, did allow a little more strength this is where we use the uh, quarter inch material on the lower section gave a little more strength below but not as not as good of a, as some of the other uh, options in the next one which uses the 3 8 material on the bottom on with the 3 quarters exterior uh, around the perimeter which allows me to have a stronger seal a stronger strength for the cell area because I'm using the stronger material below, it gives me double mounting strength, just like the one above it. It's uh, actually a little easier to assemble, and I'll show you that in a second. And then, but the one negative of this option is that it doesn't. It costs the most, slightly, you know, a dollar more or something, just because you're using uh, both the three-quarter and the three-eighths channel material. You add up these scores, and and basically this last one comes out a little bit better. So that's the one we're going to go with. If I take a closer look at it, the uh, the plan would be to uh, I got my glass cut, which is uh, 26 by 36. I'll be able to lay a bead of silicone down on the channel itself. Uh, after the the, uh, the channel pieces are together and lay the glass into that structure and clamp it down so I'll have a nice silicone seal between the glass and this channel and I uh, and will be able to add a bead of, uh, of silicone at the end uh, between the glass and the channel material uh, when I get all through so that's step one, putting adhering the glass to the channel. Then <coughs> I can separately build the array on top of this uh, 3 30 seconds backing material and uh, get it nice and perfectly uh, centered and square. And then I can actually, on the bench, 
silicone that to the, the top of the 3 8 channel material. This is before I've attached the 3 8 channel to the outside channel. So this is a separate build. And then when I get that all done and happy, I can lower it in to the outside channel and either with combination of welding, screwing, or a structural epoxy, I can hold this channel inside of the outer channel. So that looks like that's the going to be the most favorable. It gives me a decent seal up here, a nice tight sandwich between the glass, the array, and the backing material. Good strong structural support for the backing material. Strong lower section support for mounting and nice uh, a lot of surface area here to get a good bond between the lower channel and the outside channel. So that's what we'll go with. Talk to you later.